Is world peace possible? What do you think? I really sometimes wonder, there is so much violence and ignorance and hatred and anger and injustice in the world, it can seem very unlikely that any peaceful state around the world will happen anytime soon. And yet, I'm also hopelessly optimistic <laughs> about it. And uh, I had a recent interview with uh, Henrique from Ecstatic Dance Eracera in Portugal, uh, an ecstatic dance facilitator, and he was talking about how he feels very hopeful for the future um, as a part of, you know, sort of witnessing what takes place in ecstatic dance events. And I feel the same way. I feel totally that, you know, the process of just coming together and having fun and opening your heart and connecting with other people and doing exercises that sort of facilitate a feeling of connection and oneness with people. This is really something that is very, very important. And I think that a lot of the differences, a lot of the war, a lot of the turmoil that happens in the world is because of feeling of disconnection with others and feeling that you're better than others or that others are better than you. And I think this cause, causes a lot of discord and the need to control others and the judgment and more and more separation. And the more separate we are, the, the more we live in our own bubble. Like in the United States, um, there's been several instances recently with, I mean, there's always mass shootings in schools and, and you know, other facilities. But just um, last week, there were two shootings of people just approaching, um, you know, somebody's property. One was a young man, I think a 16 year old man in Kansas City who simply rang the doorbell of somebody's home and he is a, you know, a black child and he thought he was picking up his siblings in a house, but it turned out to be the wrong house. And the owner, a white man, shot him through the, the door um, in the head and the arm and miraculously he survived. There was another instance of a, a young woman, I think she was 20 or 21 years old, who was um, going to with friends to see other friends in upstate New York. And she was on the wrong property and the homeowner shot and killed her. And this is something that we see happening more and more and more. And this, this sort of fear that people have of other people just even being on their property. This is such a, you know, that we live in a state and in, in the world where there are so many um, people living in fear all the time. And I have throughout my life lived in spiritual communities. So on and off, since I was pre in preschool, I've lived in communities of meditators and where people were coming together to create more, more peace, not just for the people that are meditating, but there's actually been a lot of scientific research showing that the benefits of meditation not only benefit the people that are practicing the meditation, but also people who are not practicing the meditation. So this is something that I've, I've experienced very closely. I've, I've lived in communities and I've seen what can happen when a lot of people are meditating together. And it's not always like this miraculous thing, but I have experienced it. For example, at the beginning of each semester, when I was in college, I studied at Maharishi International University in Fairfield, Iowa. And this is a consciousness based college where everyone would meditate together twice a day. And I was practicing advanced techniques. And so I was meditating a few hours a day and for a couple years, many, many um, uh, long periods of meditation, sometimes several hours a day. And at the beginning of each semester, we would have a retreat where we would everyone would meditate a little bit more for two weeks. And by the end of these two weeks, it just felt like everyone on campus was just buzzing and was so like, just happy and, and ecstatic. And it just felt so good. And, and it felt like every thought that I have would just manifest instantly. And so it's very powerful what happens when a lot of people come together to meditate. And I also lived in another um, spiritual community in North Carolina for a while where we were doing many long hours a day of transcendental meditation and the yogic flying technique, which generates even more coherence and positivity in the environment. Now, again, I mentioned this is something that has been actually scientifically researched and over the last, um, I think 17 years, they've been looking at the amount of people meditating together in this community and it's something that, you know, I was witness to firsthand 
sometimes because I didn't always live there. I was there in college um, starting in 1999 and then I graduated in 2004. And then I would go back to this community once or twice a year for different events when I was uh, working with the David Lynch Foundation. And, um, and then I moved back there in 2000, late 2018, 2019. Um, so I wasn't there. A lot of this study looks at what was happening um, specifically between 2007 and 2012. And I wasn't there when this large group of people was meditating together every day, but I'm just going to read this article because it's really, um, it's really interesting and it, and it touches on a lot of things that, that I want to comment on. So this was published in the World Journal of Silence, uh, excuse me, the World Journal of Social Science, <laughs> looking at silence. Um, okay, so they published a study showing that the group practice of TM, which is Transcendental Meditation, and the TM City techniques by the square root of 1% of the U.S. population decreased multiple stress indicators in the U.S. And scientists call for a group to create world peace. And this is an article written by David Orm Johnson. He's um, the one who really looked at a lot of the data. And he said, occasionally in my career, I have had the good fortune to make discoveries that show something that is utterly abstract, look completely obvious. This study was one of those times. What could be more abstract than the idea that people meditating together radiate an influence of coherence throughout the collective consciousness of a large country like the United States? which reduced the numbers of murders, rapes, robberies, aggravated assaults, infant mortalities, vehicle fatalities, drug deaths, and children and adolescents dying from injuries? Who would ever believe it? Yet this is exactly what this study shows. Group practice of the Transcendental Meditation and TM, TM City techniques, including yogic flying, in the Maharishi Patanjali Golden Dome of Pure Knowledge at Maharishi International University in Fairfield, Iowa. We have been meditating together every morning and afternoon since 1979 for the purpose of creating coherence in the collective consciousness of the United States and the world, and we have been studying its effect on reducing stress and improving the quality of life. Figure 1 displays the number of people meditating together in the MIU community from 2000 to 2016. The horizontal green line indicates the 1,725 participants or the square root of 1% of the U.S. population, which is the group size needed to engage the entire U.S. population at a higher level of coherence. And this is in the field of consciousness. So if you have 1,725 people meditating together, the idea is that it'll create this um, wave of peace throughout the environment for the whole United States. And so it shows the number, and I was there um, in 2000, and then I was away for a year or two, but I came back in 2003 and four. Um, it was an, anywhere between like 400 and 700 people meditating together uh, on a daily basis, morning and afternoon. And I remember, um, you know, seeing those numbers, that sounds about right. I remember about 700 um, people on some days when we'd have, um, you know, more people meditating together in the domes in the Golden Domes, which um, I'll show a picture of me when I was in preschool standing in front of one of the Golden Domes and some pictures of people meditating inside that building. Uh, I moved to this community when I was in preschool because my dad volunteered to build one of the Golden Domes. There's two that sit on campus next to each other. And so you have men and women meditating in, in those domes together every day. And there's also a picture of Oprah Winfrey when she visited and did a big special about this community on her network. Um, so figure one defines the baseline demonstration period and post period for the present study. During the baseline, there were, there were around 600 participants in the group until 2006, when MIU undertook a major project to increase the number of participants in the dome, at which point the group quickly increased to reach the target goal of 1725 participants in 2007, the square root of 1% of the US population, calculated to create coherence for the US as a whole. This rapid increase in the size of the group was stimulated by a special initiative called the Invincible America Assembly, which provided stipends for the participants and paid for 1,000 TM and TM City experts to come from India to join the group. 
The program successfully maintained the group at the U.S. square root of 1% threshold for five years from 2007 to 2011, the demonstration period. Then despite all efforts to maintain the group, funding was lost and the size of the group decreased, particularly in 2013 and 14, when the TM City experts returned to India and the numbers fell precipitously. (laughs) Figure two represents a remarkable image of what happened. As in figure one, the blue line shows the size of the MIU group. The different colors in the chart represent the eight stress indicators from FBI and CDC statistics for the United States, as well as the the U.S. stress index, the red line, the average of all eight variables. Okay, so you can see um, the lines and the numbers. And David said that we expected all stress indicators to decrease during the demonstration period because previous research by Michael Dilbeck, PhD, and Ken Kavanaugh, PhD, had shown that it reduced violent crime, drug-related deaths, fatal accidents, and murder. We also found for murder and homicides that the effect was reversed when the group size decreased. Yet the simultaneous reduction of all variables shown in figure two and their reversal when the group size fell was astonishing. As soon as the size of the group crossed the square root of 1% threshold in 2007 and not before, all stress indicators simultaneously began decreasing compared to the baseline when they were not changing much. The one exception was drug-related deaths, the brown line, which was increasing steeply during the baseline and leveled off during the demonstration, indicating an abrupt reduction in the rise of drug deaths in the United States. When the size of the group began to decrease in 2012, everything went south again. The effect was reversed. At first, the rate of decline of national stress only slowed. But then in 2013, when the 1,000 Indian TM City experts had to return to India and the size of the group dropped precipitously, it created a shock to U.S. national consciousness. At that point, all stress indicators suddenly began to rise towards their baseline values. What we see in this is that some of the influence of the coherence-creating group lasted for a while after the group began to disband. We have seen this before in previous research, depending on how long long the group was in place. The more coherence that is created, the longer it lasts, even when the group size falls below the the square root of 1% threshold. The rapid decrease in national stress only after the square root of 1% threshold was reached supports a phase, phase transition model, like water that does not crystallize to ice until zero degrees Celsius is reached, Life and society did not become systemically more coherent until the square root of 1% of the United States population collectively engaged in this technology. We calculated the level of suffering in the U.S. during the baseline, and it is staggering. According to the FBI and CDC statistics, each year from 2000 to 2006, there were an average of 15,440 murders, 93,438 rapes, 879,281 aggravated assaults, 419,253 robberies, 28,081 infant mortalities, 16,338 drug-related deaths, and 42,201 vehicle fatalities, and 86,348 children and adolescents died from accidents each year. And of course, these are the statistics of these assaults that were reported, Um, like rape, for example, is often not reported. Um, We used regression analysis to estimate how many deaths and events were reduced by the meditator group. Figure three shows an example for drug-related deaths. The red dotted line represents the baseline trend projected into the demonstration and post periods. This clearly shows that the demonstration period drug-related deaths, the black line, fell to 14% below their baseline trend and were another 15% lower during the post period for a total of 79,941 fewer drug deaths than predicted by the increasing trend that was occurring during the baseline. 
Sadly, during the post period, when the size of the TM and TM City group de decreased, drug deaths increased. By the end of the post period, they had returned to their baseline level. Similar analyses were conducted for all variables, which estimated that the MIU group averted 28,553 murders. I'm just going to round up the numbers. <laughs> about 53,000 rapes, about 950,000 aggravated assaults, around 485,000 robberies, about 32,000 infant mortalities, about 80,000 related drug deaths, and around 60,000 um, 60, vehicle fatalities. That is an incredible amount of suffering averted. We used state-of-the-art methods of time series regression analysis for eliminating potential alternative explanations due to intrinsic pre-existing trends and fluctuations in the data. We also carefully studied potential alternative explanations in terms of changes in economic conditions, political leadership, population demographics, and policing strategies. None of these factors could account for the results. Increase individual coherence to increase collective coherence. How can we begin to understand this remarkable phenomenon? Maharishi maintains society is governed by its collective consciousness, an abstract field that is the summation of all of the influences of stress or coherence of the individual members of society. Whatever the type of government, democracy, monarchy, socialism, oligarchy, communism, or even anarchy, every individual in the population contributes to national consciousness and reciprocally, national consciousness influences everyone. It is a universal theory of social organization that is true for all forms of government because the individual is the unit of collective consciousness. The key to reducing stress and improving the quality of life in any society is to provide evidence-based educational programs to the population that increases coherence in the individual. You could think about just like a tree. You have a green forest and it's made up of individual green trees. So it's a similar um, idea here that each individual is a unit of collective consciousness. As a scientist, I asked myself, how would I operationally define the concept of individual coherence? What does it mean actually? How would one measure it? Coherence means the quality of forming a unified whole. A coherent system is one in which the parts of a system function together harmoniously to support the whole and the whole supports the parts. When I began to think about it, I realized that we had already operationalized the concept of individual coherence in the 650 studies showing that the practice of the TM technique improves virtually all aspects of the individual's physiological functioning, cognition, and social behavior. For example, TM increases EEG coherence, which is correlated with creativity, intelligence, and higher states of consciousness. It increases creativity and intelligence, reduces anxiety, and decreases hospitalization rates in all categories of disease and age groups. It reduces risk factors for cardiovascular disease, is the most effective means for rehabilitating incarcerated felons, and for alcohol, drug, and tobacco rehabilitation. These are just a few examples of how TM increases coherence in the individual as the basis for increasing coherence in the collective consciousness. These holistic effects on the individual support the theory that TM's effects are from the unified field. And also, I didn't mention this, but I have um, taught men, uh, many people transcendental meditation. I was teaching transcendental meditation from 2005 till about 2019 when I left Los Angeles. And um, so I'm, I'm well aware of a lot of the research on the TM technique and the TM cities, the advanced form that includes yogic flying. Um, I'm, I'm just reading this article um, that if anyone wants to discuss or wants me to elaborate on any of any of the topics that I'm covering, I can certainly do so in another video. So what David Arm Johnson just said, these holistic effects on the individual support the theory that TM's effects are from the unified field. Consciousness is all there is, the unified field. The finding of the present study that group meditation causes all variables to move up and down together 
supports the theory expressed by both Maharishi Mahesh Yogi from the Vedic perspective and by Dr. John Hagelin from the quantum field theory, that the TM and TM city groups create coherence and collective consciousness from the unified field level of natural law. This is big. It is evidence from more than 50 studies of the existence of the unified field from a completely different approach than using particle accelerators and detecting gravity waves. If the unified field is a field of consciousness, then it makes sense that evidence for its, ex for its existence would come from within consciousness itself. Many contemporary philosophers and scientists are proposing that recent knowledge supports the view that consciousness is all that there is as has been so brilliant, brilliantly expressed by Tony Nader, MD, PhD. How do the TM and TM city techniques create the effect? By way of explanation, Maharishi has offered the analogy that consciousness is like the ocean. The waves of the surface represent our individual thoughts and behavior. We each have our own individual local reality, but we are influenced by the activities of all the other waves around us. More fundamentally, at the deepest level of the mind is transcendental consciousness, silent, non-moving, infinite, pure consciousness, the self of all beings, the essence of all things. On that level, we are infinite, unbounded, non-changing, ever the same. It would be not accurate to say that we are all connected in the transcendent because connected implies differences. On that level, we are the one, singularity, being, self, Atman, Tao, and the many other beautiful expressions for pure consciousness that have appeared throughout world history, the supreme awakening. And this is interesting, actually. I just want to um, pause from reading for a second because I often say, like, we are all connected at these deeper levels, but, but, you know, also that we are all one. And um, I've had just really profound experiences where I feel that oneness and, and, and I still tend to say in that connection with everything, but it really is that we are literally one at that, at the level of the unified field. So this idea, you know, that like our thoughts are the typical, what people would describe as the conscious mind being the waves on the surface of the ocean. But then as we turn our attention inward and we settle down, we experience more subtle levels of consciousness and the boundaries of, you know, the normally limited perception that we have when we're awake of, of what we can see and, and perceive and think and feel, those boundaries start to dissipate in our consciousness. We access that unbounded field of consciousness, which is being beautifully expressed here. But I just want to elaborate on it because as we transcend and we experience that field of pure consciousness, the, everything is one. And we also are enlivening that. It's very much like a garden that might have many different types of plants and vegetables and flowers and trees. And on the surface, it looks very different, you know, and the, they might function very differently. They might feel very differently. A, a woody hard trunk of a tree is going to feel very differently than like some soft flower. And it's very, feels very delicate in some ways, but they both produce flowers and fruits and, and food and, um, you know, look different but the same colorless sap flows throughout everything. And what do they all require? Water. You know, we water the root to enjoy the fruit is a saying that Maharishi was very fond of. And it describes this thing about, you know, accessing and enlivening pure consciousness, which strengthens the differences. It gives more integrity to each particular, you know, plant, flower, or person, individual personality, creative gifts and abilities, uh, any, everything that, you know, it makes us uniquely individual is also strengthened by tapping into the same field of pure consciousness that we are all one. <laughs> so, um, I just, I just thought this was interesting because, uh, it's an important distinction. I do sometimes actually see and feel these, these threads of light that, that, um, it's almost like a mycelium network or, um, like, you know, neurons in the brain where you have, you know, different, <laughs> different, like balls of, of, of light, but everything is connected. But at the basis, we're all one. Okay. I'm going to return back to the article that David Arm Johnson has written. And he said, the greatest discovery in the history of science, 
The greatest scientific discoveries of all times are often listed as the wheel, electricity, the printing press, the internal combustion engine, the radio, telephone, internet, satellites, atomic energy, and the unraveling of the genetic code. These momentous discoveries have greatly expanded human knowledge and capabilities, but none have the potential to reduce human suffering as quickly and comprehensively as group meditation has been shown to do. This is the most important study on collective meditation to date because it is the longest term and most comprehensive demonstration of the effect. Cost Benefit The Howard and Alice Settle Foundation funded the project for $75 million in a grant providing stipends for project participants and to bring and house the 1,000 visiting TM City experts from India to America. Howard Settle commented that whereas $75 million sounds like a lot of money, it is minuscule when compared to the benefits derived by society. For instance, this study indicates that 395,027 people, lives, excuse me, <laughs> indicates that 395,027 lives were saved during the five years of the program, which means that each life was saved at a cost of a mere $190 per life. In addition, an estimated about 1.5 million violent crimes were averted at a cost of $50 per crime. The total economic benefit to the U.S. from this program, estimated to be in the hundreds of billions of dollars, will be the subject of a future research project. But by any measure, this study demonstrates the cost effectiveness of using these technologies to improve the quality of life in any society and emphasizes the importance of having these programs in place on a permanent basis. Mr. Settle is currently working to develop permanent groups at MIU and around the world. Groups for the world. No one is safe until everyone is safe. Our paper concludes with a call to create a permanent square root of 1% group for the whole world. 9,000 participants practicing the TM and TM City program together in one place. And as an engineering safety factor, a square root of 1% group on every continent would be most effective and reliable. The world is so interconnected. No one is safe until everyone is safe. All living in harmony. This is easily within reach of any government or the world's wealthiest citizens. The person who does it will, re will be remembered as the greatest leader in history.